Hello again and welcome to the Interchange Book 3 video series. Today we're going to do Unit 11. And part of Unit 11 is talking about time clauses. Time clauses. Alright, so let's get started. Now, first let's talk about clauses. What is a clause? For example, a clause always has a subject and a verb. So basically a clause is like a sentence, right? So if we look at this sentence, I have a time clause and a main clause. I say, before I studied at Intercultura, I didn't like English. So I use this time clause because I'm talking about a specific time using before. Before I studied at Intercultura, I didn't like English. And notice I'm using a comma to separate my time clause and my main clause. Now, I call this my main clause because if I cover up my time clause and I say, I didn't like English, that's a complete idea and it does not need any more information. So that's why it's a main clause. It is independent. But if I cover my main clause up and I read this, it says, before I studied at Intercultura, and I get the idea that I need something more. I need to finish this idea. So my time clause is very dependent, right, on my main clause, right? So we're going to look at time clauses and main clauses today. Okay, so with this idea, right, I was looking for work in the newspaper, many different places, maybe the internet, right, maybe my friends, and I got a job. So I want to think, well, what happened before I got a job? What are the things that happened before in my life, before I got a job? Or maybe what are things that happened after I got a job, right? Or maybe what are some things that happened the moment that you got the job, right? So the, the exact moment that you got the job or the time around that you got the job, what happened. So we're going to look at these different ideas today. Alright, so let's take a look at our time clauses. Now, when we use a time clause, we always use a time phrase to indicate time. So for example, when we're talking about a sequence of events, we can use things like before and after. So remember, before indicates something that happened prior or before the action, and after indicates something that happened later than the action, right? So if I think, what happened before I got a job? Well, before I got a job, I didn't have any money, obviously, right? Um, or after, after I got a job, I started saving money, okay? So remember, before and after are for sequences. One thing happened before another, or one thing happened after another. Now, when I want to talk about two things that happen almost at the same time, right, I can use things like once, the moment, and as soon as, as soon as, right? So we use these for two things that happen almost at the same time or the second action happens almost immediately after the first one. So if I say, once I got a job, I celebrated with my friends. So almost immediately after I got a job, I celebrated with my friends. The moment I got a job, I bought formal clothes, right? Or as soon as I got a job, I had less free time. So again, we use these once, the moment, and as soon as, to indicate two actions that happen almost at the same time. Or sometimes this action cannot happen until this action happens. All right. Now the last one we're going to look at is sequence. Sequence with the past perfect. Now if you remember what the past perfect is, the past perfect is using had for the auxiliary and the past participle for the main verb. So when do I use this? I use it with things like until and by the time. Okay? So if I think until I got a job, I had never worn a tie. Okay? So I can use this in the idea that I'm thinking, well, I and never in my life I had never worn a tie 
until I got a job and then I started to wear a tie. Okay? Again, I can use by the time and that's like another way to say before almost. So by the time I got a job, I had applied at many places. Okay? Now I know these two are difficult to understand, so I'm gonna focus more on these with different examples. Okay, so here we use until. So remember with until, until signifies that there is a change in something. So it basically means that you do something until a certain time and then you don't do it anymore. Or maybe you don't do something, right, until a certain time and then you start to do it. So until always means that there's a change that you basically do the opposite of what was before it. So let's look at this context. I had never worked a full day in my life until I got a job. So that means that well now I work full days. But until I got a job I had never worked a full day in my life. Now when I use until in the past tense I'm often using that grammar. The past perfect. Had a negative. Had never and here's my past participle worked. But I don't always need to use things in the past tense when I use a time phrase or when I use a time clause. So for example I could say well I will study English until I get a job and that means that when I get a job then I will stop studying English. Right? So here it is. I will study English until I get a job and then I'm not going to study English anymore. Okay? So notice I can use these in different types of grammar, future and past. Okay, so I hope that helps explain until. Remember, until it means that there's a change. It means that you do something that you did not do before. Or maybe you don't do something that you did before. Okay? Alright, now let's look at by the time for my time phrase. So if I read this, it says, I had applied for a job at many places by the time I got a job. So by the time again is basically like saying before. So before I got a job. But it really indicates that between this action I had applied for a job at many places and this action I got a job that there was a distinct amount of time. For example some time later passed and then I got a job. So I'm usually using in the past tense the past perfect when I use by the time to indicate that this action happened and it finished and then sometime later I got a job. Okay. Now another example of this is in the future. I could say I will finish studying by the time I get a job. So this is the future. So I don't have a job but I will finish studying at the university and then sometime later I will get a job. And so again, we can use by the time to indicate that. I will finish studying by the time I get a job. All right, guys. So I hope this was helpful in understanding how we use until and by the time. And let's look back at this certain example that we had. And I just wanted to show you that, again, with the time clause, we use our time phrases, and then we use the main clause right but we don't always have to use this order I can talk about my time clause first I can talk about the main clause first and the time clause second right so again I can say I didn't have money before I got a job or I started saving money after I got a job and the same goes with any of these basically you can say I celebrated with my friends once I got a job. Or you could say, I bought formal clothes once I got a job. So remember guys, I can use my time clause with my time phrases and then I can use my main clause. But I don't have to do it this way. I can start my sentence with the main clause and finish with the time clause and this is what it looks like. Right. So I can say I didn't have money before I got a job or I started saving money 
after I got a job. Or I celebrated with my friends once I got a job. Or I bought formal clothes the moment I got a job. Or I had less free time as soon as I got a job. Or I had never worn a tie until I got a job and now I wear a tie. Or I had applied at many places by the time I got a job. So I hope this was helpful in learning how we use uh, time phrases and time clauses to talk about uh, sequences of things, things that happen at the same time, and also sequences using the past perfect. Alright guys, thanks for watching and good luck.